Alright, mi día mabo, bon bini, no encuentro un sesión, más chama se dan que para acompañarnos a ver un día más arriba mi canal de YouTube, arriba Instagram, of naturalmente turno seguidor nan también arriba Facebook. A ver, no sé, un amigo junto con nos, esta de visita, na corsao, esta announcer, esta locutor, na Phonix, ahí en la Holanda, pero... Lo cual que está jalando más y más yo atención, principalmente está su podcast, ¿no? Arriba su canal de YouTube, que está... Fernando, ¿ok? okay, okay. Fernando, X is in that station for a reason, baby, ¿eh? Fernando, ¿eh? Real talk. All right. Yeah. Nando, uh, it's a pleasure having you in our studio today. Thank you so much for dropping in. Thank you so much for for joining us for this session. Uh, we do not have the time to have the complete podcast, but do the next you time. owe me one, yeah. right? So yeah. we're going to do that uh, on the next occasion, sure. right? I'll be back. So, <laughs> <laughs> Nando, let's talk about entertainment showbiz. Uh, let's talk about uh, all that is happening right now, um, specifically with our uh, Caribbean boy, in uh, in the, in Holland and in uh, Europe. Yeah. Uh, Jayon, we have Irsais. Uh, tell me what's what's happening with those boys on the airwaves yeah. in Holland. Well, um, I'm proud of the, all of the talent we have on the islands, the ABC, A to the B to the C, I always say. <laughs> um, so I'm very proud of the fact that we have amazing talent. And specifically when you look at Jayon and Irsais, mm -hmm. these are guys that have been focused on making music, focused on putting the passion in front. Right. And me as a radio DJ, I saw that like years back. So I always was like, I gotta support this, I gotta push this, I gotta help. Right. So it's, 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 a, it's, it's a thing where I believe you have to help when you have a platform. Exactly. So with my radio show in the Netherlands, I was always pushing their music. And when I saw that these guys were getting more exposure outside I was like this is dope this is dope right. so I right. remember being in the studio with ear size and he was playing me music right and he played me dream girl I was like this dream is girl. this this that song he's like you sure yeah that's this, the song this is it it's gonna be so when it blew up he was texting me y'all remember when you told me this yeah. I was like yeah it's it's, it's 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 God's plan this was right. meant to be right. same thing with Jay on like I was always playing his music music with Ateniro different stuff Bond vibes all that kind of stuff so when I heard that he connected with Jay Balvin. Mm -hmm. It's God's plan. It was, right. The whole story, like in an interview with him, he was telling me that he was in, in New York and he was working out in the same gym and then he figured out he was staying at the same hotel as right. Jay Balvin. And right. that's meant to be, man. And it's the fact how the world has responded to the music, we always knew that. Like right. when we when we listen to the music of Jay on and Ear Size and the other artists that we have, right. we have amazing talent on these on these islands. People just be like, oh, I didn't know that. Right. The language, right. The, the vibes, the energy. But not everybody is Jayon, Irsais, and Ataniro. No, but... So, the, yeah. so, so what do our youngsters and, and, and teens, what is the, the secret ingredient that they need to have to be on the airwaves? Well, um, I would say I keep my ears to the streets. Um, I like to hear um, hunger. I like right. to hear a talent that's really dedicated to his or her craft right. that puts in the work you can hear it right details how they sing right the music the chords the layers how right. it's mixed mm -hmm. a lot of people send you music and it's not mixed right it's not right. mixed properly um a lot of people sing you songs that are not meant for the radio exactly because uh when 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 recording you need to take many things into account um, for example, like you just said, you're not just making a song for Aruba or for Curacao specifically or for Bonaire. You are making a song to be a global hit, so you need to have that global mentality, yeah. right? So so I think um, many of the upcoming uh, uh, stars, uh, we have a lot of them uh, um, here in Curacao, but I'm sure Aruba has a lot of talent too, uh, um, specifically in the, in, in the urban industry. There's yeah. a lot of talent in Curacao and in Aruba as well. A lot of uh, media outlets, they look at consistency. Right. Uh, if radio stations hear your music, they're looking at your catalog. Okay, 
is there more coming out? Right. Uh, are the songs as as, as as good as this one? Right. Is this a one-hit wonder? Is this an artist that has a following? Right. They're looking at the very different stuff. But on the other hand, you have more options nowadays. Because mm-hmm. nowadays you also have the internet. Right. You got the streaming, you got, you got Spotify. You Was got- there ever a song that hit the internet before it hit Nando Leaks? I mean, like a song that you missed. You know, a song that you miss, that you say, you know what? I, when I first heard the song, yeah. it didn't mean anything. It did not vibe. I didn't um, feel anything. But then you heard it on Spotify, and then yeah. it did make a difference. The and songs, now it's on yeah. on the, on the airwaves. I don't feel like I don't, I don't miss that often. And <laughs> and and when people send me music, uh-huh. I ask them two questions: Is this your best song? Mm-hmm. And if so, do you got more? Mm-hmm. And I look in their eyes. Right. And I see hunger. I know it's good. What does hunger look like? Hunger is someone that's he's looking at you, or she's yeah. looking at you yeah. like you need I to got try more. This. Let's you go. Let's. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is so important because right. the the thing with music, music is sometimes very ungrateful because you could put in a lot of work. You get your parents mad and upset because you tell them you want to be an artist, and they're laughing at you, telling you no. You need to go to school. You need to go to school. Right. And finish that school. Finish. <laughs> you need to finish something in life. Right. I mean, if you it do. is school, just you do. finish something you're passionate about and right. be good at it. Right. Um, I always tell people that focus on something and become good at it and make it professionally so right. you could be happy and you could take care of your family. But what happens to a lot of artists is that when they start doing music, a lot of times they think, ah. Oh, never going to happen mm-hmm. but if you believe that it's never mm-hmm. going to happen how are you going to make somebody else you play a song to like be be eager to listen to your music right you have to feel it music right. is passion music is passion so if i feel that you feel your music yeah you're going to make me want to listen to your music don't right. send me 10 records that are yeah you should listen to this one this one is for the club this one. send me your hottest record right because when i interviewed rihanna at the age of 18, when she had pawned the replay, mm-hmm. she stepped into the room. I was with her in the room, and I was looking at her. She had that island vibe. She mm-hmm. had something special. I didn't know she was going to be this big. I think right. like a lot of people didn't know she was going to be that big. But right. she had that special thing that I know she was going to be successful. Right. A lot of colleagues of mine told me, why are you eager to do that? Because she wasn't right. big at that moment. Ooh, wow. The same thing with when I interviewed Chris Brown. I interviewed him when he did Run It. He mm-hmm. was 16, 17 years old. I was interviewing him. I think mm-hmm. it was in Rotterdam. It was for a little showcase. He came to the Netherlands. Wow. And I interviewed him. His mom was there doing his management, all wow. that stuff. So that's why I said like, I always had a finger on the pulse. Mm-hmm. Like way, way, way back before the songs became hits, I was playing it. It was because I feel a certain passion. Right, And right. They, they, they all have it. The greats, they all have it. So Rihanna, Drake, tell me that story you, you told me uh, about DMX. Oh, that story. Oh, yeah. Um, the story that your mom yeah. called and talked to DMX. <laughs> That's uh, crazy. That's um, for for people that don't know, DMX is one of my hip hop heroes. Mm-hmm. I have Tupac, I have uh, DMX, and 50 Cent, mm-hmm. and Nas. There, there, there are many more, but a certain hip hop heroes that just they just moved me. DMX was this guy that came out in 1998, changed the whole hip-hop scene because mm-hmm. you had Puff Daddy with his shiny suits. And I was so obsessed with that sound. Yeah. With my dogs. <laughs> so so that that energy that I was like, what the hell is, where this guy come from? <laughs> Tell him about it. And my mother was hearing him barking. Who, who, who barking like a dog? <laughs> Says so it's music. Dino music. And my mom started to um, learn to uh, enjoy his music. music right. So after I was playing a thousand times, stop, mm-hmm. shut him down, open up shop. <laughs> oh, so afterwards she started to like his music as well. She was like, "Hey, I feel what because he used to pray on the mm-hmm. album, and my mom liked that part. She was like, right. see, he's 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 praying to help people go to the right side, right, right, not right. let them go to the wrong <laughs> side.' So I like DMX. So fast forward, uh, 2006, I heard that DMX was in the Netherlands. Uh-huh. So I was like, yo. I need to interview I him. I need to interview him. And right. I, I was just working at the radio station for like two years. Right. So I was telling everybody at the radio station, mm-hmm. I'm going to interview DMX. And some of them were like laughing. Like, 
Right. It's like, yo, you don't know. I, yeah. I got Manifest. to integrate. Manifest. And, 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 <laughs> and that's why I try to tell people, like, live the dream. You have right. to believe it. Right. And I'm this guy that a lot of people will be thinking, like, but is he really... Yes, I believe it. I see it in my mind. So, so because short, Nando, you have some crazy stories. You have DJ <laughs> Jackson. Yeah. You have some crazy stories. Yeah. yeah. So, so DMX, fast yeah. forward. Yeah. So you was, walking in 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 Rotterdam. Yeah. So yeah. so so I uh, walked in Rotterdam. Told him that I was going to interview him. Then I went to Amsterdam um, because he was staying at a hotel. So I figured out which hotel he was staying at. Then I went to the clerk, the, the girl working at the desk, and I said, hey, hi, my name is Fernando. I got an interview with DMX, very serious. <laughs> so she was like, okay, he must be serious because he's uh -huh. not laughing. He has this very uh -huh. s s strict face. Like, and, DMX, and she was like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's his manager there, so you should ask him. So so I, I went to the manager and said, hi, my name is Fernando, and I'm here to do an interview with DMX. So this guy is looking at me like, this guy full fault, boy. He gonna do nothing, boy. What you do? So he tell me, he tell me like, we're not gonna do an interview with DMX. So there was another person uh -huh. telling me I'm not gonna interview DMX, DMX. and this was his manager, mind you not. What? So any other person would be like, okay, I tried. Right. But he doesn't know Fernando, so I told him like, okay, uh, maybe later. Right. Listen, listen, we're not gonna do the interview. Mm -hmm. So my eye went to the left, and then all the way to the back. I saw DMX with his bodyguard. So I did this. Yo, D, what up? <laughs> you good? So like, you know like how Korean like, people is? Like your friends load. for years. Yeah, like friends for years. What up, D? So he so he looked and he came up to me. He was like, yo, what, what up, son? What's your name? I'm Fernando. I work for Phonics Radio. Uh -huh. I'm a radio DJ. I'm, I'm up and coming. I have a dream. And you're one of my hip-hop hip hop idol, uh, hip -hop, hip -hop idols. And I would really like to interview. So this manager's looking at me, wanted to throw me over like the balcony. He was like, what the hell is wrong? So DMX was like, I feel, you, I feel your energy, man. We're going to do it later. Mm -hmm. So DMX, he gave me a pound and then he walked. Then... Then I was standing again with the manager. The manager like, yo, not because DMX told you to do an interview, going to make the interview happen, because he's just being nice. So just give me your number and I will and contact I will call. you tomorrow. Right. right. But I knew that DMX wasn't going to be there tomorrow because I already knew that he was going to have a, another performance in another country. Right. So this guy was trying to, <laughs> right. he was to mama guy me. Was he yeah. wanted like brain? Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, okay. I'll let you believe what you want to believe. So I stayed in the hotel, waited for four hours. Until he came back. Until the MS came back. But he didn't come back. Because the manager came back. He was, and he came looking in the hotel and he saw me still sitting there. And then I saw him on the phone. And then he was like looking kind of mad at me. And then he, he walked away again. So I was like, okay. I think he came back to look if I was still there. And he called someone. I don't know who he called, but then I was like, okay, I got to come up with something. got to come up with something. And I remember seeing a girl at his concert the day before. So I was like, but I know this girl. I saw her on stage with him. So I went up to her. I was like, hey, my name is Fernanda. I know who you are. And I was like, hey, yeah. you doing that? Yeah. So like, uh, are you befriended with DMX? Or was it? Yeah, no, I, ju I just met him and, and, and we're cool. And they're coming Groupie? to- Groupie? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Is she, like, is she, like how? <laughs> very beautiful girl. But I, I don't know. Like, I don't want to say that she was a group because she didn't yeah, come yeah. over that way. But she was yeah, that, yeah. that she was that kind of girl that everybody just want to hang mm. around with. Mm. Like, you can't get anything from her, but right. you just want her yeah, <laughs> next to yeah. you. That was this girl. Very sweet. And she told me, like, um, uh, I was like, can I give you my number? And if they come and pick you up, because I know they're going to come back and pick you up and carry you wherever he is, let me know. Just let me know where you is, and I will come out. So a half an hour later, the manager came back in, and he picked her up. And I said, bye, Fernanda. I was like, bye. Bye, Elvira. Sh shout out to Elvira. So they took her. So I was like, fuck. Four and a half hours, waiting, waiting, waiting. So my mind was thinking, okay, come on, you got to come up with something. Uh -huh. Half an hour later, so my job, five mm -hmm. hours, she called me. She was like, yo, You're here. DMX is in the Kalverstraat. We're on, we're coming on the other side. It's like, wait. So where I was, it took 20 minutes to walk to where they was. 
I ran. You ran. And I had this big recording thing, and recording with a mic. I was <laughs> <laughs> running like I was Usain Bolt. On Your crack. life depending on it. I was running, 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 running. Focus, focus. <laughs> then I saw them like, like, like in, in, in the distance, and I was like, "Let me slow down so I can catch my breath." Uh-huh. Look at me. You know, you gotta walk your cool off. Like, yeah, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> when I catch my breath, I said, "Like, yo, D, what up?" Uh-huh. Again, and then, then he's always like, yo, what up? I thought you left. Um, the manager uh-huh. said you left and you went home. No, bro, I didn't leave, man. We we made a commitment, so I'm waiting. Uh-huh. So he was like, I said, like, I don't know where you want to do the interview. He said, like, let's do it now. Let's do it right here. So I interviewed DMX in the Kalverstraat in 2006. In wow. the Kalverstraat, talking to him. It was monumental. It was next level. I also brought... The original album is Dark as Hell is Hot with me for him to sign it. He also signed it in the city. But so, the highlight wasn't DMX, bro. No, it was more... It, it was, was your crazy. mom calling. <laughs> my mom stole the show because my mom was calling me the whole day because I had to help my mom do a lot of stuff. Then I had another friend. He was moving. And I had all these people that wanted something from me. Right. But I was focused. Focus <laughs> on DMX. Yeah. So my mom called me. My mom was from... Yeah, she, she Caribbean. So she was like, where is... Um, and you know, like, even when you put the volume low, you still hear the, the voice. You know? Yeah, I hear with, uh, <laughs> with, with, with DMS. Where you lying? Where the hell are you talking to? You know, DMS. I was like, oh my God. So DMS looking at me, and he was like, like what's wrong? Yeah. I was like, it's my mom, and she doesn't really believe that I'm talking, talking to, to you, you right now. Right. Oh, mom. Hey, I love the mom, man. You know, he t- took the phone, talked to my mom. Like, five minutes, I was like, but what? This is next level. Yeah. So him talking to my mom, laughing. Life story, baby. Gave me back the phone. And my mom in a cool tone of voice. Okay, Nando, uh, do your interview uh, with DMX. I will see you later. <laughs> I was like, what? So that was crazy. And my mom, she called everybody on the islands. My son interviewed DMX and I spoke to DMX. Right. So that was very magical because that and was that, like... That is, that is Aruba. That is Aruba, right? Yeah, yeah. She was in Aruba. Yeah. Because you are originally from uh, Aruba also, yeah, yeah, right? But yeah, my parents are both from Aruba. I was born and raised in the Netherlands. And the mm-hmm. first time I went to Aruba, I was six. Mm-hmm. And I also went to Curaçao because my right. mom wanted to show me the island. So I went to Curaçao and Aruba was six. Uh, so my memory is very vague. Uh, I do remember my grandmother and grandfather because mm-hmm. I only saw my grandmother only twice in my wow. life. And, and then after she, she uh, Aruba, she passed away. that is Nicholas Chocolate yeah. City. Chocolate City, boy. Or, I tell you, you saw. <laughs> or the Sunrise City. They yeah. call it the Sunrise City or Chocolate City. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, what is your driving force? I think my what driving What is your driving force? force? What to accomplish me. all these interviews and your success being a Caribbean boy living in the Netherlands and hosting one of the most listened to radio shows, yeah. you know, what is the driving force? I think my driving force on one hand is my mom, mm. the strongest woman I know, a woman that's always been there for me and still, mm. she'll say, Nando, you, you in the hotel? Yeah, you, you clean up everything. So sometimes it's like, my mom, I, as a grown man. Grown man. Like, well. but, but on the other hand, I'm like, she cares. So right. that's, that's a gift by itself already. Mm-hmm. And I think one of my, my biggest driving forces, even though he wasn't really in my life, is my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad wasn't really present in my life. Like once a year, he appeared and then mm-hmm. he, like mostly mm-hmm. for my birthday and then he yeah. was gone and then yeah. two years I didn't see him then again so it's like a, a on and a, off thing yeah like like a like like a stoplight like like a yo-yo yeah. thing. where yeah. is he oh and yeah. ta-da so I only remember three cool things I did with my dad and that was like going to the movies mm-hmm. so that's why the three times I did go to the movies with my dad mm-hmm. it always resonates it's, with me exactly that's why I'm a big movie fan because right. that's also the place that relaxes me because right. it, it, it subconsciously it takes me back to when my dad mm-hmm. was really there. Mm-hmm. For the hour and a half of the movie, yeah. he stood there next but to me. But does he, he make you want to be a better dad also? Yes, yes. He's my big motivation. Like right. on one hand, it's very, um, it's very painful when you think about the fact that your dad never told you as a kid that he loved you or, the, or you right. or you looked at other kids 
hanging out with their dad, going on vacation with their dad, right. and doing this. And uh, you have to come up with lies and tell people, mm. oh, my dad is on business. That's why he can't come. Yeah. So all these things I'm telling people yeah. uh, just to not feel ashamed. And now that I have a little boy and he's like five years um, and I also have a stepson, and these these kids, they, they give me energy. They give me... Because I feel that they love me and mm-hmm. I just put in the work. Right. And I spend time with them. Like with uh, my son, when, when it's his birthday, I always take free. Always take off. Like always, it's, you know, it, yeah. it doesn't matter if I'm interviewing. Yeah. If Denzel Washington would, would come the would 28th, you? I would, would say you? I ain't doing it. You would take him with no, you. No, you I, would take the boy with you. On his birthday. And you would say, this yeah. is your birthday gift. Yeah. but <laughs> Sit yeah, and be yeah. in the presence of Denzel Washington. Yeah, but I've thought about <laughs> that. But like the thing that's so um, so instilled in me is that um, I want to make his birthday and a lot of other days. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to make them count. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because say, for instance, I would take him to Denzel. Then it's more my thing. Yeah, it is. So, so I would rather take him to Mario World because he loves Mario and the whole Luigi and the yeah. Nintendo thing. Because yeah. then he will always know my dad did that for me. Right. And my son didn't ask to be here. So me as a parent, um, I have to figure out ways how, how to make him feel special. Because right. kids are very special, but you have They to are. tell him that. You have right. to... Like sometimes just say, hey, I love you. You know that? Mm. Just looking at, I love you. And mm-hmm. just kisses on the, on the cheek, the head. Like, yeah. Do you think things? that dads uh, often do not do that? They, they, they don't do that. Particularly dads. Because dads think they are strong. And, 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 and you know, they need to have that macho thing. And I'm the hero. And you need to see that I cannot be vulnerable and lovable. I need to be this strong man, yeah. you know. And, and maybe that takes away a bit of the emotion and the feeling of yeah. I love you. Do yeah. you think that? Um, it, it, it depends. Because a, 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 a lot of things, how we treat our kids or part of how we've grown up and part of what we have seen as mm. kids like say for instance if you're used to your dad hugging mm-hmm. and kissing you and doing cool stuff with you it's programmed normally in your brain to want to do that with your kids because you've right. always seen that right. but when you don't have a dad that did all those kind of cool stuff with you mm-hmm. it kind of makes it sometimes hard to figure out okay um, how do I do this how do I figure out how to be a good dad mm-hmm. what's a good dad like mm-hmm. nobody's perfect right But the thing that that makes you a cool dad is that you're that you show up. That you show up. You show up. up. You It's not about being up. perfect, because right. of course you got to work a lot of times and put in the work, and you're not mm. going to be every single minute. But it's about like when you're with the person, you make it count. Exactly. Show up to do the work. Let's talk about purpose. Let's talk about purpose in life. Do you feel like you are walking in your purpose? Yeah. I feel like um, my calling Mm -hmm. is helping people. Mm -hmm. My calling is motivating people. My calling is teaching people Mm -hmm. how to... Be a better version of themselves. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because to find that key... Because everybody has that key instilled in their their heart. Right. But you have to... That one ingredient. Yeah, but you have to open it. You have to find the key to open the door. Yeah. You need to unlock, unlock your it. greatness. Right. Everybody's great, but you got to find the key to unlock your greatness. Right. You got to find your inner voice to speak out. Mm-hmm. And there are different people that can help you. You have role models that could be your parents. You got friends that could be your role models. Artists could be your role models. Mm-hmm. Athletes could be your role models. Mm-hmm. And role models, they can help you navigate. Mm-hmm. Navigate your way. Because we're, we're living in a jungle. Because right. if you look at social media, we're living in the jungle. People don't know who they are. You got filters. People looking different. You see them in real, per- in real life. Like, what the hell? Who you is? I'm that person. No, man. I told you, you you're like a meme. You're like a filter. <laughs> like, they were like, serious. Like, Instagram make people look like, yeah, like, like true. Like, true. Like, like, you see, what yeah. the hell? Like, so you look true. Like, what is? <laughs> like, and all the looks. You're right. People renting cars, right. playing rich, all that kind of stuff. Because we're like. Um, We're like starting to be programmed that that's right. what happiness looks like. That's mm. what you gotta look like as a bot. Like yeah. I say, like, say for instance, 
You see, you have some beautiful women changing their body. It's your body. No person can tell you what to what do about to do it. With if your you body. want to, if, if right. you feel like your breasts or your hair or something you want to change, do it. It's your body. But don't do it for another person. Do it for yourself mm -hmm. if you decide to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you go deeper in yourself and you start to love yourself even mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. you will figure out like, maybe I don't have to change this. Mm -hmm. Because people fight so hard to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But the most perfect thing is imperfection. Because imperfection is what makes you perfect. Mm -hmm. If you look at the greatest paintings in the world, right. like the Mona Lisa, yeah. and you look at it, it's not perfect there's there, there's 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 stuff that doesn't really but add up it but is uniquely look. created exactly. that's the thing and right. all of us we're god's children we're all uniquely created the one guy can play soccer the other girl can play tennis the other one does this but we all need each other as an ecosystem right. that's why it's good for everybody to find their own passion right because because right. everybody has their own passion you connect so my purpose in this world and madness is to talk to people mm -hmm capture their stories, mm -hmm. record their stories, put it out there so mm -hmm. I can educate and maybe help someone that's trying to navigate in this world. Like, mm -hmm. say for instance, I'm interviewing um, TJ Jackson. Right. Um, he's also my new podcast. But like, my conversation with him can inspire someone that's maybe a fan of him or a fan right. of Michael Jackson and wants right. to know stuff about Michael Jackson because he's mm -hmm. also telling those stories mm -hmm. and also his own stories. How is mm -hmm. it to be the, the, the cousin of the most famous artist in the world? But also, right. he's also talking about life. He also told mm -hmm. me how it was to become a, a dad at 19 years old. And that's a thing that a lot of people live through. Right. So you can also learn that different stuff in my interviews and right. things that you can pick from. A lot right. of people don't want to listen at school. You hear the teacher mm. like, rah, 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 like, I don't want to hear this. Because it's all about frequency. Mm. It's not that kids don't want to learn. It's you have to find the frequency Their where frequency. they tune in. Exactly. It's the same thing when someone is talking to one. you. You and need they, to find the frequency where they tune that's in. That's it. That's right. the whole, That's a good one. That's life. Yeah. It's all frequency. Right. If, if, you're, if you're in a relationship with someone or you're friended, befriended with someone and you're not on the same frequency, you're speaking a different language. Different language. <laughs> But I love you. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> the, the, yeah. But that's that's the whole balance. But True. The, the the key to life is very s simple. The key to life is we're all looking for happiness. We are. But we don't know how to be happy. So mm -hmm. we're looking for happiness in different things. So as as you mature and grow up, you Preach figure Mr. out. Preach, Mr. Nando. No, but, <laughs> no, but as, as, as you mature and, 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 and you grow up, you figure out, okay, hang with these people doesn't make me happy. Buying all of this stuff doesn't make me happy. So what makes me happy? And then you start to filter. I always right. tell people, it doesn't matter how many mix, mistakes you make. Mm. It's how eager are you to fix those mistakes. And mistakes are your path to success. Because if you, say for instance, I try to open this door with this key and it doesn't open. Well, that's the wrong key. I got to find another key. Right. But if I think that's the right key for the door and I never tried it, I'll be living a lie. Right. So we mostly live lies in our mind. that If I have all of this stuff, I'm happy. No. Mm -hmm. The second thing what we try to figure out is, mm -hmm. okay, what is love? And love is complicated, but very easy. Because you can't buy it. You can't just get it. It just has to happen because people align in a certain frequency. Mm -hmm. When you have a kid, the kid is already on your frequency. The kid grows in your body. You kiss the belly of your wife and you'll be like, oh, yes, oh, this, oh I love you. Oh, love. Right. Sometimes you walk on the street, the other person you meet um, broke up in a relationship, you broke up in a relationship, and then you, you're on the same frequency and you connect and you'll be like, wow, you, you wow, you really, well, we're similar. And then, you don't know, like something you meet people and you keep talking, talking, oh, but this is meant to be. It's not just it's meant to be, it's, it's, it's the fact that the frequencies were at the same level and you found each other because it resonated. Mm -hmm. And because it resonates, you connect. And then comes the different I'm loving plan. this. I'm really, truly <laughs> no, but, loving no, but, this. But that's, that's, that's the whole thing. And then, and then when you figure out love, then you figure out, okay, but I wasn't really happy because I didn't mm. have love. Mm. A lot of people are chasing love. They don't know it yet. Mm. When you ask people, what do you want to be? Rich! Why well, you want to be rich? So I can buy everything. They're thinking that when they have everything, they can attract love More. and all these stuff. Yeah. But you're not attracting love mm -mm. because if I'm attracting wealth and money and I want that, mm. that's a different 
energy. You shouldn't、mm. chase money. You should chase a passion, and money will find you.、Mm. And that's the whole thing in life. It's not about being perfect, but we think it is. Till we figure out,、mm. I just want to be happy. I just want someone to tell me, "You love me." I want to、mm. matter. You want to matter. You want to count. You want people to appreciate you. Exactly. You want to have some kind of value and learn to appreciate、right. people. Because if you have、mm. someone in your life that is always doing the best for you, tell、mm. them, "Yeah,、hey, I see you." We all want to be seen. Why do you think we're on Instagram? We want to be want seen. To be see. Nando, I see you. I, I see, see you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Nando, just before you leave, what's the one thing that、um, you will remember after this trip? Of Curacao,、um, I know you love some good food like、yeah. plantains and and、yeah. stuff criollo,、yeah. like they call it here. But、yeah. what's the one thing you will take with you? A few things, but I also want to give you a big shout out. I want to say it on camera. What what people don't、um, maybe grasp in their mind that they're in the midst of greatness. Like I was telling you off air, I'm going to tell you on air right now. Thank you. You're very gifted. Thank you. Like, in my mind, you're the Angie Martinez of the Caribbean. <laughs> Angie Martinez. Yeah. So, and, and, and oh, that, that's Radio Hall of Famer there. Okay,、yeah. but we're putting you in the Hall of Fame because we have to give each other flowers. Because a lot of times we don't do that enough. Thank you. So people walk in greatness, but people are scared to say, "Hey, cool. Hey, wow."、Mm. That's something I want to see change because. We should be happy that we have people like you on the islands, building content、right. where people on the island get exposure, that it can talk, that it、right. gets recorded, that it doesn't become a secret in a room. And you said, "I wish I could tell people this."、Right. You are also capturing their stories. Thank you. You are also building、mm. a legacy.、Right. You are a legend. You are great. Thank、That's、you so much. That's what I'm、so、telling、much. you on camera. <laughs> I see you. You're a radio queen, and you're doing this. Thank you so much. But what are you? What is your takeaway from Curious? This is my takeaway from Curious.、Yeah, Coming you. here, you having your own studio, doing your own thing. Thank you. And I respect that. That's the, like all the other stuff, the good food, huh? But meeting great people that have that great energy and are just doing it with love. That's the gift. Exactly. So、um, you've been to Ochinti Ocho Rakorso, Big D, and、mm. you've been to ninety two point one MC Chris Trick. What's your takeaway from the urban scene here? So I love these people.、Mm. Wow, like the passion.、Um, my mom texted me. Shouldn't you be relaxing? Yo,、uh -huh. Yo, mom, this is this is this is me paying homage to these great people on the island. That's、right. what I said. Like my thing is like showing love, right? Like going to different studios, talking to people,、mm -hmm. and and just seeing what you guys are doing,、mm -hmm. like connecting. That's how we become big, right? You become、True. big when you form like Voltron. You have to connect.、Exactly. Everybody's busy with building their their own their island. Their own thing, yeah. But why don't we connect the islands and make a bit a big land? Right. True. That's that's, true. that's what I believe in. Like building、yeah. the culture. That's、yeah. why I come here. That's why I go to the, just. I'm all. I'm looking. I'm、right. I'm 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 observing and I'm I'm giving tips and I'm learning. So I love it. I love so it. So the urban scene is well on its way yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. The talent just got to be focused. Mm -hmm. uh, believe in yourself. Make the best music you can.、Mm -hmm. uh, be very.、Um, just be very focused, and also surround yourself with people that want to see you win.、Mm -hmm. uh, and also、oh, surround yourself with people that are very、uh, that are very honest. Right. A lot of times when you play music for your friends, boy, you the hottest. You the new Jay Z. You the. the, the. But you need some people to tell you, hey, bro. Maybe you should work on that. And、yeah. he's not a hater because he's telling you to work on something. He loves you because he's telling you to work on something to make yourself better. Better, right? Because all of these artists, big, small, medium, they always have people around them that make、mm. them, that push their buttons.、Mm. A lot of people don't know that that song with with uh, 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 Buster Rhymes, to do do. One of my favorite Buster Rhymes song, to do do. If you really want a part of me, let me see what you got for me. Put your hands on my eyes, like like that song. <laughs> boom, boom. Now that you are a whole vibe, you know. But that song, but, <laughs> no, but 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 that song only came to be because P Diddy told Busta, "You're always rapping." People can't understand you and all that stuff. So Busta felt a way about that comment. 
Buster went to the studio and he was like, okay, I'm going to go to the studio. So he, he toned it down. So he was very, became one of his biggest hits because mm. someone told him something and he reacted to it in mm. a positive way. He could have been angry and just, but he proved him. But I we need do it. to learn to feedback with love. Yes. The intention yes. should be love intention always. Intention is key. That's the good word. Exactly. Intention is the key. What's your intention? When people come to you and tell you stuff, always figure out what their intention is. What's right. your intention in life? What's your purpose? And your purpose you can figure out by just looking inside your heart. What is your heart telling you? What puts a smile on your face? Right. What's your inner voice telling you? And translate that into passion. Awesome stuff. Mr. Nando Leaks, keep it hot. Keep it banging. Keep it banging. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dushi. Love. Thank you. You forgot to tell them about the Awila Munchi. You've been drinking Awila yeah. Munchi your whole vacation. I got to come with my own brand. <laughs> Awadela Munchi by Fernando. Good vibes only. Let's go. Awo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Shalom, I'm going to give you a lot of people. Thank you for having me. Thank you.